First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our moderator, our friend, Venerable Monkema from Myanmar, for your nice introduction. Good afternoon, brother and sister in Dhamma. I'm really happy to meet you again for this seminar. This seminar we have a special topic to discuss uh, concerning with the Buddhist welfare. Uh, the title with the Buddhist approach to social welfare. When we talk about social welfare, I think we can say that Buddha is the first social welfare in Buddhism. Because Buddhist missionary started by the Buddha and he sent his disciple to different direction to disseminate the teachings of the Buddha. One of the very beautiful advice given by the Buddha is that uh, monk keep going, keep going monk, good for the many. The happiness of the many. So, for the compassion of the gods and men, for the compassion of many, don't go to just one direction. Two persons do not go one direction. Just go one direction, one person. So, this is the inspiration the Buddha gave during his time in order to propagate his doctrine for the benefit of the world. We also came from a college from Sadao, Mary Benenabal, Upundala, he knows and the motto of the International Buddhist College is the, for the benefit of the many. So, International Buddhist College is also under a social welfare program. So, we are benefited by the, the social, the social welfare program, social welfare organization. Now, this topic is so important that actually, without this uh, doctrine, without the further implementation of the social welfare program, I think Buddhism cannot be propagated and also Buddhism, Buddhism will not be popular as it is now. Uh, as we can see that there are many welfare program, many Buddhist missionaries are now is conducting by the Buddhist monk, by Buddhist organization around the world. And so I just remember one very famous missionaries, Buddhist missionaries. I would like to tell you that about the Anagarika Dhammapada. When we talk about the Buddhist missionary, Buddhist social welfare, uh, he is a QB. He is a, like a, a, a like quite dressed person to take a piece of, but he is not a Buddhist. But this person is from Sri Lanka, scholar, social worker. worker. He uh, protected the Buddha Gaya monastery from the Hindu extremists, you see. So when Buddha Gaya Monastery was about to grab by the Brahmin people in India and they, they are demanding that this Buddha Gaya is belongs to them. But Anagarika Dhammapala, he demanded that, so this is the, not the, belongs to the Hindu people, this is not the Hindu pilgrims, 
So this is a Buddhist pilgrimage. So therefore, this Buddhist heritage must be belong to the Buddhism, must be recognized as a Buddhist heritage. So because he demanded that, because he fought against those Brahmin people in order to protect the Uddhagaya from the Hindu extremists. So he successfully came to Kaya. Therefore, yesterday was his birthday. 17 September is uh, his birthday, Anagari Katamakala birthday. I think uh, he passed away long ago. So I hope now he is in a good place. He will in good place because he did many things. Now, it is such an important that Buddhist welfare because uh, without Buddhist welfare, Buddhism cannot be popular, even Buddhism cannot be survived as well. You see that uh, under the category of the Buddhist welfare, when we are receiving donation, actually it is a kind of the Buddhist welfare program. However, uh, okay, before I go further to that way, but when we see that now, I should tell that uh, the Buddhist missionaries are going on in Myanmar, like Chitagu Sayadaw. So he is doing very great work, great job for not only for the Buddhist people, even he is doing for the other religious people as well. So I heard one day Chitagu Sayadaw said that uh, we no need to force anyone to convert. To Buddhism, but we can do this way. We can support others, even support other religious followers. So one day, if he, if they really likes to come back to Buddhism, so we welcome them. Otherwise, we no need to force anyone to come to Buddhism. So this is the important factor that Buddhist welfare program is important because uh, when we literally say that. The Buddhist welfare is actually like a government subsidy, it's organized by the government to provide support for the poor people, like medical, medical care, like social services. But when we see the from the Buddhist perspective of the Buddhist welfare, then we say that it is like a donation giving. And of course, the Buddha already has emphasized that. The, the importance of the giving, you see, because of the giving, so Buddhism become popular. And because of the giving, the Buddhism propagated, Buddhism lasts longer. Because of giving, because Buddhism now we have more than five hundred million followers. In Buddhism. I would like to uh, mention one very important topic here that. Today, uh, I have researched something about the social welfare, about the missionaries. I found that our Buddhist missionaries somehow, Buddhist welfare program are weaker than the others group. Of course, uh, when I compare with the Mahayana, I think the Mahayana are the more stronger than Theravada in terms of the Buddhist welfare program. Uh, of course, uh, we are all to learn with each other, and still, I found that the Buddhist social welfare program uh, much weaker than the other religious, you say, other religious missionaries like Christian missionaries. They are more advanced, uh, and their contribution is much more uh, advanced than us. Uh, one of the most uh, important thing is that. I show that in Bangladesh that and the people uh, who uh, follow the Christianity, and their lifestyle is very advanced. They have jobs, money payment, they have all kind of supports from their religious uh, organization. But uh, from the Buddhist, the people who Buddhist. They never got support from any organization. So, and recently there is one very pathetic thing also happening in, especially in Bangladesh. They are a poor Buddhist. 
and their parents are uneducated, illiterate. Therefore, there are some kind of Muslim people that go in their village and finally they convince those villagers if you convert your children to Muslim, so we will provide you food and shelter, we will provide you money. Uh, then finally, uh, they became Muslim. You see, very sad things. And I also saw that in Bangladesh there is one village. Indigenous people they live in one village. In that village, initially those village people are all are uh, Buddhist. But when they are Buddhist, they are poor. Then Christian missionary when they are to propagate their Christianity. So finally they convince these Buddhist people uh, if you convert to Christianity. So we will give you job, we will give you job security, we will give you money. But one thing you have to do is just abandon Buddhism. You just convert to Christianity. So in the village, uh, one person, I think uh, in the village comprises, I don't know how many families, I think more than 30, 50 families. Only one person, he did not convert to Christianity, but another 99% they become Christianity. So, uh, because of that, uh, the, the people who become Christian, their lifestyle upgraded. You see, they became, they became wealthy, they, became, they have uh, like at least what called the Kunda motorcycle. But the people who did not convert to Christianity, so they remain poor. But I still uh, thank to them because as, even though they do not believe that by only, only one family uh, was not believed that by the money. But somehow we also have to think our Buddhist scholar, Buddhist social worker in the future that how we are going to deal with this issue. And finally, my advice is that we must learn from Christianity. The Christian are advanced, especially social welfare, than this. So we must learn from them, and also we apply same knowledge uh, in order to propagate our religion, our social program. Very importantly, I would like to mention two man in Thailand. One is the most venerable Panyananda. He also he was also a social worker. Uh, you can see that Mahatma Lakshman, the, the you know what about the uh, uh, I think he donated uh, more than two hundred million baht. Uh, you can see that this is what about the in the front. And another monk is the Wongkama Abua. So what, they are one side practitioner, another side is social worker. Social worker. Wongkama Abua. And you know, he what he did. I think long ago, I, I cannot remember the day. I think in 2012 or something like this, if I'm not mistaken. At the time, the, I think Thailand faced the reserve crisis. Gold reserve crisis. <coughs> so therefore, uh, long time Mahabu also he took a very important step to help the government. What he did, he announced that he is collecting gold for the government. Finally, he collected uh, more than uh, one thousand kilos of gold, and that gold, I think, one thousand one hundred. I cannot tell the exact number. More than 1,000 kilos of the gold to download. You see? So, by this example, one thing we can understand that the social welfare, social worker is so important that uh, not only for the personal benefit, but also for the greater benefit as well. 
Thank you very much for listening.